This logo cost British Petroleum $210 million, and I'm going to show you how to recreate this logo from scratch and how you could create a logo worth over a million dollars. I know that may sound big, but I'm going to show you what the high-end designers do to create really high-end logos and why they're worth what they're worth. So the reason why companies like this spent so much money, $100 million here on this logo, $55 million here on this logo, $15 million and $1.8 million for BBC is because they understood brand recognition. They understood branding and the psychology of what you see when you look at this logo and what emotions come up. Do you feel like this logo is eco-friendly? I do. But British Petroleum was spilling oil and they were doing all this stuff and they didn't want to be perceived as that. They wanted to be perceived as eco-friendly and they really pulled it off really nicely. All right, now we're going to get into the fun part and actually make a logo together. I'm going to show you the three things that you need to look out for when making a professional logo that I consider a million dollar logo and that's the way you have to think about this if your company blew up to a billion dollars then what would your logo look like and you can't get there by having the wrong messaging the wrong branding the wrong logos and stuff like that so let's do this right let's make a really professional logo together and the three things to look out for are colors what colors are you going to use what fonts are you going to use and what icons are you going to use to pair with those fonts so the first thing i like to do is go to logomaker.com l-o-g-o-m-a-k-r i'm going to put the link in the description below and I go through their design templates. That's the first thing I do to get me kicked off. And what I want to do is I want to sell a green tea company and I'm going to use this template right here because it looks natural and nice. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that one right there. Let me move my face out of there. Okay. So the next thing I do is I go into the layers palette right here. You may see it down here. You could just move it wherever you want. And I click on these layers just like that. You could even click here and it will click on the layers. I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to click on this little thing here to replace this graphic. I'm going to replace it with a leaf that I like. I'm going to search for this leaf and click on it. It's going to replace it. I'm going to go ahead and click drag and hold and I'm going to kind of center it there. Now I want to change my font right here because I don't like that font. It doesn't match with the leaf. You always want to match your icons with the font. So you go here to bold and I'm going to choose something I like. I like this one. I feel like this matches really nicely with that. It has the same thickness and the same curves and everything else like that. So I'm going to use this font. Also, it's bold and it sticks out and I can see it from far away. The next thing I want to do is match the color. So I'm going to grab this color right here. I like the darkness of this. If you just click on the area that you like, it's going to show up in this palette here. I'm going to go ahead and grab this number. That's the color number. I'm going to right click, press copy. I'm going to go to this natural area and I want it to be a solid color. You can make it a linear color or whatever you want, but I'm going to make it solid for this one and I'm going to paste it in there and that looks pretty good. That stands out pretty nicely. Now I'm going to put my name in it and I'm going to put in green T. There you go. That looks pretty good there and you could resize it and just kind of move it around to make it look great. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move this little square thing up right here. I'm going to grab that, move it up, and then I'm going to move this up as well, and I'm going to put established in 2001 just like that, and I'm going to go ahead and just make that a little darker. Maybe not that dark, but darker. There you go. Now I want to center everything by highlighting everything. All I'm doing is clicking, hold, and drag, and I'm going to highlight everything so all those layers are highlighted. And then I'm going to go to styles, and then I'm going to align it. And what's cool about Logo Maker is you could always add more layers by clicking the tools here. So I could add another text layer. Maybe I want a phone number or something like this if I was going to make it a banner, or I wanted a layer like a square or a shape or even a star. I could add a star or go up here to the millions of graphics and you could type in anything you want and you could add more layers like this leaf right here if I wanted to add that to the bottom or something I could do that but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to click delete and if you want to save your logo just click here to save it and it'll give you options to save it in a high resolution format now this looks like a professional logo but I want to make sure that you could always make a professional logo and I created a checklist here that you could download let me go over this checklist right now because it's super important that you know how to make a professional logo every time you 
using this checklist, the first thing you want to do is you want to look at your industry. So what I do, let's say I wanted to do a fast food industry, is I would look at the similarities in this industry. Do you see any? I see yellows, I see oranges, I see reds, I see the same types of fonts. And that's what you want to do when you're making a professional logo is make sure it looks like it's part of the industry. I can get into the psychology of that, but believe me, that's important. The second thing is color matching. Make sure your colors go well together and they match. The, the third thing is icons and graphics. Make sure your icon or graphic, if you're going to use any, um, are really a representative of your company, your brand, and the emotion that you're trying to get out of it. And then the, thir the fourth thing is matching the fonts with the graphics. I am super passionate about this. You really want to make sure that your icons and your graphics match. And that's the uh, uh, really telltale sign of a professional logo is when this icon matches with this and it has the same thickness same lines and it looks like it's just part of that that's really important and then of course symmetry and alignment if you do all these things you will have a professional logo and i'll put this checklist in the description below to help you out hope this video helps and i'll talk to you on the next one